Hello guys and welcome back to Planet 40k Tyranids. In today's video we're going to be looking at a beginner's guide to the Tyranid Codex. Maybe you're considering starting Tyranids or maybe you just keep coming up against them and this is going to assist you in your game either way. So the first question you've got to ask yourself is what's the reason you're going to want to play Tyranids? Is it the sheer amount of monsters that are available to the Tyranid Codex? Is it the fact that you like to play hordes? Or is it just the psychic power that this codex actually offers. First of all, we're going to talk about the strengths and weaknesses of playing the Tyranids codex. So, as for the strengths, the Tyranids are a very speedy faction. All types of battlefield roles have got the speed, unlike other factions within the 40k game. They're also one of the best psychic factions within the game. There are some other notable psychic factions such as Grey Knights and Thousand Suns, but the Tyranids are definitely up there. They're going to fit numerous different playstyles, whether you like melee, whether you like shooting, hordes, monsters, psychic power rest, as we've already mentioned in the intro. So lots of different styles to adapt to your playstyle. And they're just an extremely durable army. I mean, the monsters in particular are Toughness 8, and all the little bugs on the side that come in their hordes. Yes, they're only Toughness 3 with a low armor save, but because of the fact that you've got so many of them, it makes your units quite durable. They've got quite unique ability mechanics, which we will go over later in this video. And another point here in terms of the shrimps, they're just easy to change high fleets game by game. There aren't specific models that go with specific high fleets, everything goes with everything. And game by game, if you want to play with the Kraken high fleet, then the following game you want to go with the Behemoth high fleet, you can do that on the fly. All very adaptable and interchangeable as you go. And the last thing, you've got the customizable high fleets. You've got the generic high fleets that are within the codex and you can actually customize those generic options which is something that quite a lot of the other factions in the game cannot do unless of course they go to the custom options and pick out a complete unique sub faction to that player but we can actually change our generic high fleets and customize them with the biomorphologies again we'll get on to that now as for the weaknesses for playing the tyranids codex first of all losing synapse can be absolutely devastating if you don't know what a synapse is we will also get on to that but effectively if you're not around models that have got the synapse keyword you're not going to auto pass morale and some of our leadership characteristics within the codex are not that great in fact that is the second point low leadership for some models some of them go as low as four so yeah synapse can be absolutely crucial the third point I've got for you is the lack of aura abilities to buff multiple units. There are ways to buff lots of different units within the codex, but there is a severe lack of auras apart from the main ones such as Synapse. Finding a balance to your Tyranid list can be quite tricky because we have recently had a points increase, particularly for monsters. And if you are wanting to play some monsters and getting the balance right for your standard infantry, as well as your monsters and your hordes and all that jazz, you can find it tricky at first if you are a beginner. And finally, units have less utility in this codex, whereas in some other factions, some units have multi-purposes within a game. In this codex, it's not quite like that. One unit will have its sole purpose, and once it's done it, it's done it. So where do you begin when you want to start Tyranids? Well, first of all, of course, you need to look at the Tyranid Codex. And then the Combat Patrol box set is always something that I would advise. Now, the Codex currently is £32.50 in the UK, and the Combat Patrol box is £95. So what do you get in that Combat Patrol box to make it so good? First of all, you get a Hive Tyrant, which is a very playable model, and you can even build this as a Winged Hive Tyrant or even a Swarm Lord if you wanted to. All three very usable monsters within the Codex. You then get three Tyranny Warriors, which are troop selections. They've actually got the Synapse keyword, which is going to be very handy for your backlines in particular. Or if you're going forward with these guys in melee, also very good at having that Synapse keyword. You then get 36 Termagants, which are shooty bugs. And you're also going to get three Ripper Swarms. Now, Ripper Swarms are not the best unit within the Codex. I'm not going to start bragging about them, but you do also get them. They actually come with the Termagants within their boxes. Now, if you were to purchase all of these models individually, it's going to come up to £142.50 in the UK. Whereas this box set, you can get it currently at £95. So you're saving £47.50 if you were to buy this box set. Now, there is another optional box set that you could take instead of the Combat Patrol box or even to add on to your Combat Patrol box. It's the Boarding Patrol box set, which is quite a new one, in fact. And with this £80 box set, you get one Broodlord, six Tyranny Warriors and eight Gene Stealers. Again, all very usable models within the Codex. Now, individually, this is £127.50, so exactly the same in terms of savings here, £47.50. So that's some cheaper ways of getting hold of some models. What about taking a look at the unique high fleets when you are playing Tyranids? So there are currently seven named high fleets within the Codex, 
we're going to go through the basics of each one of them today. So the first one is the Behemoth High Fleet. These are your ultra aggressive melee based High Fleet. You're going to get a plus one to the strength in the first round of combat as well as a re-rollable charge roll. So if you are planning to play a melee variant of Tyranids, Behemoth is definitely something I would take a look at. Another melee type of High Fleet is the Kraken High Fleet. This is your melee High Fleet with speed. You're going to get the additional minus one AP to units on the charge. And when you're doing an advanced move, it's D3 plus 3 inches as opposed to rolling a D6. Now these are also pretty good in combat as we've mentioned. Not as punchy as Behemoth, they don't get that plus 1 strength like the Behemoth High Fleet does, but these guys are much quicker. The third on the list is the Leviathan High Fleet. This is all built upon resiliency. In order to wound your monsters, it's going to be a 4 plus as a minimum to wound them regardless of the strength. And going up against your non-monsters, it's actually a 3 plus. So what this is actually going to do is it's going to keep your Synapse monsters up and running, which of course will keep your smaller bugs from actually running from the battle. They also get a single reroll to hit when making a hit roll, which is also very good, especially with your bigger and badder weaponry. The Gorgon High Fleet, this is your poisonous High Fleet. They're always wounding on a 4 plus versus most units. I don't believe it includes vehicles and titanic models but everything else is a 4 plus. Now why that is so good is if you've got lots of small little bugs on the battlefield and they're normally strength 3, even if you're going up against the monster that's got a toughness value of 8, you're still wounding on a 4 plus so that effectively means that for that particular fight your bugs are actually strength 8 at that moment. They're also granted a single reroll to their wound rolls per unit as well. Jormungandr is the next one, this is the very sneaky high fleet, they lurk in the shadows, sneak attacks, they gain dense cover when they're shot at distance and blast weapons are less effective against these guys. So yeah, if you want to play your sneaky Tyranids, coming in from the shadows, coming in from reinforcements, this is definitely your playstyle. The Cronus High Fleet, this is your shooty high fleet. So if you're going shooty rather than melee, this is definitely the one to go for. They get an additional 4 inch to their ranged attacks with the weaponry. And also if you're shooting at half range, you get to add minus 1 to the AP of the weapons. Pretty decent. And the final one out of the 7 named high fleets today is the Hydra High Fleet. This is definitely quantity over quality. This is your ultimate swarm high fleet. They get a plus 1 to hit if they outnumber the enemy's unit. They also get a plus 1 to the movement and a plus 3 inches to the consolidation move. So Definitely one if you're playing swarms, especially in melee. Now as we already mentioned earlier in this video, there are ways of customising these seven named high fleets. And there's what's called biomorphologies. You've got the hunt biomorphologies, the lurk biomorphologies, as well as the feed biomorphologies. Each one of these named high fleets has access to two out of three of these options. And what you can do is swap out the second part of the high fleet's ability for one of them that are on the list. And I'm not going to go through the list because there's a lot of options to get through. But as an example, if you were to take the Chronos high fleet, you can remove the shooting at half range, adding additional AP, and you can swap it out for one of them within those lists. In fact, you've also got the option of just completely ignoring those seven named high fleets and creating your own. That's something a lot of people do as well. Right, so that's the high fleets. Let's talk about the codex abilities, just the general codex abilities that all Tyranid players should understand. So first of all, Synapse. We alluded to this at the start of the video. It's an aura ability, and if they've got the Synapse ability, while a friendly high fleet unit is within 6 inches of this unit, they automatically pass morale test. So again, we mentioned earlier, some leadership values of units within this codex are very low. Leadership 4, leadership 5. You don't want to be failing a morale test with those kind of units. So if they're within 6 inches of a Synapse unit, they're going to automatically pass. That's going to be fantastic if you can get that all army wide. The second ability to note is Shadow in the Warp. Usually when a model's got Synapse, they've also got Shadow in the Warp. Not always, but most of the time that is the case. This is also an aura ability, and it affects enemy Psychers that are within 18 inches of that model. You subtract one from the Psychic Test taken from the enemy unit, and each time that unit suffers Perils of the Warp, it suffers an additional Mortal Wound. So a bit of anti psychery there. As for some more unique Tyranid abilities, we've got quite a decent mechanic here, which is called the Synaptic Link Range. So what is the synaptic link range? Some abilities refer to selecting a unit that is within synaptic link range of a unit with this ability. So when selecting a unit with synaptic link range of a synapse unit, you can select any unit that is within 12 inches. So let me break that down a little bit because it could be quite confusing at first. Let me take a Broodlord for example. This Broodlord has got the Vicious Insight ability. So let's go through that to begin. In your command phase, you select a friendly high fleet core unit within synaptic link range of this model that has not already been selected for this ability this turn. Then until the start of the next command phase, each time a model in their unit makes a melee attack, an unmodified wound roll of a 6 increases the AP by 1. So you have to select a unit within synaptic link range of your Broodlord. So I've got a little image here that's taken from the Warhammer community page. 
and I'm going to show you an example of how this Broodlord, which is circled in blue in the bottom left, can actually give this ability to the Gene Stealers, which are definitely more than 12 inches away. So this Hive Tyrant in the center has also got the Synapse keyword. So with the Synaptic Link range, you're effectively passing on your ability to Synapse models. So this Broodlord has passed this ability to the Hive Tyrant, which also has the Synapse keyword. And then this is also going to get passed on to the Zone Throats, which also are Synapse creatures within the Codex. So the Broodlord has passed it on a couple of times in fact and now those gene stealers are within 12 inches of the zone throats which all have linked up to the broodlord with the synaptic link range so also note here that the turagon in the green circle at the bottom is also a synapse model however this model is not within synaptic link range of either the broodlord or the hive turret or even the zone throats they're not within 12 inches of those selected models so therefore the turagon is not within synaptic link range and therefore the hermagons cannot actually accept the ability from the Broodlord which was the Vicious Insight ability because they're not in Synaptic Link range. However, everybody in the red circles is within Synaptic Link range of the Broodlord. So I hope I've made that a little bit more clearer. Now what else have we got in the codex? We've got the Synaptic Imperative abilities. I know everything's got the Synaptic word in this so it does get quite confusing. But your Synaptic Imperative abilities are your Tyranids Battle Round abilities that you can select each Battle Round. While your Warlord is on the battlefield, Synapse units from your army have the Synaptic Imperative ability depending on which one is currently active for your army. So at the start of a Battle Round, you can select one of the Synaptic Imperative abilities from a unit that is from your army. You cannot select a unit Synaptic ability if the unit is not on the battlefield or if you've already selected it earlier in the battle. Then until the end of the battle round, that synaptic imperative ability is active for your entire army and it is gained by each of the synapse models from your army. So already you're understanding that synapse creatures within this codex are very key here. Now just to give you an example of what you could do with the synaptic imperative abilities, let's take for example zone throats. You've got zone throats on the battlefield, your warlord is on the battlefield. They've got their synaptic imperative ability which is warp shielding. So while this is active, Hive tendril units within 6 inches of this synapse model gain the following bullet points. So monster models will have a 4 plus invulnerable save and non-monster models will have a 5 plus invulnerable save. So as long as they're within 6 inches of a synapse model army wide for that battle round you're going to gain those abilities. I mean there's lots of other ones, every single synapse creature within the codex has its own. For example a Tyranid Prime has Guide Mind. While this is active, units within 6 inches of synapse models, when they're making a range attack that targets a unit within 24 inches, on modified hit rolls of a 6 will inflict an additional hit. So you can play around with these in fact and find the best combination to suit you. Now there's one more thing before we end the video, I wanted to talk about the adaptive physiologies purely for monster models only. So you can actually upgrade your monster models within your faction and give them an additional ability for some points or power points depending on how you're playing. So as an example here you've got the Dermic Symbiosis, simply gives that model a 4 plus invulnerable save for the entire battle. That's going to cost 25 points and your monsters can take this. Now this does exclude character models, but for example your Tyranifex or your Exocrine, you can give them a 4 plus invulnerable save all game long. So there is a lot more to the Tyranids Codex, for example the Hide Mind Psychic Discipline that Tyranid Psychers can use. We could talk about unit synergy and tactics or the best custom combinations within the high fleets. We're going to be covering a lot more of these in tactical videos in upcoming releases on the channel. So guys if you have found this useful please remember to subscribe before leaving today. Thank you all for watching and as always I'll see you in the next one.